<laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to the Marketing Happy Hour, the Friday adventure show where we talk about all things marketing that can you can use, news and views that you can use to improve your business results. My name is Dr. Christopher Vogelman, and I am associated with our digital agency, Maximize Your Media, where we handle Facebook, Instagram, and all kinds of interesting Pinterest marketing campaigns. And I'm also the head cheerleader, as well as coach for Life Beyond Practice, our group where we teach doctors how to have more free time, freedom, and funds by creating their own online business as a secondary or replacement revenue. With me, as always, is... I'm John Paduchak. Hi, everybody. It has been an adventurous Friday today, let me tell you. And uh, so adventurous. <laughs> oh, man. Been a crazy day. Anyway, so who are you? Who am I? So uh, I have targeted solution. Net Solutions is our digital agency and um, uh, video marketing uh, at johnpatujack.com. You know, call it video marketing. Video marketing. Yes. So we talk in Boston. Hey, speaking, of, speaking of marketing, marketing is dependent to a great extent on messaging. Or is it Peter Drucker who said that marketing mm -hmm. should make sales? Um, Oh God, not redundant, irrelevant. No, what's the quote? I can't remember. I don't remember. You should make sales superfluous, I think. Superfluous, yeah, you don't need sales. You don't need sales if you got good marketing. And so we were when we were talking, what? There's definitely some truth to that. How much? Uh, I would say it's quite truthful. I don't know, I don't know that I'm 100% on board with that. <laughs> but. Don't you, think something that's, easy. don't you think something that's really good should sell itself? It should sell itself. I don't what know really it? if it always works out that way, but something. What like have it. you ever purchased that actually sold you without somebody selling you? What have I ever purchased? Nothing. Something that sold itself to you without you having to be pitched. Hmm. Huh. You know, honestly, I'm not sure I can think of anything. The only one I can think of actually is the iPhone because I didn't even need to see the commercials or anything to know that I wanted it. That's yeah, good marketing. I still had to see enough stuff that made me realize that I needed it. That you like, needed I, it. I love my iPhone, and I think the thing that finally sold me on getting one was the um, – did you get a new one? No. That is, this is the same one. It's the 11, but the case, maybe the case looks different to you. Something looks different to me. It's so, the lighting. The li you know what it is? It's the lighting because yeah. it's cloudy here in Corona on the island. And the lighting, I don't have this shining in my face. I've got from the from this side, which is light that's coming from, uh, that's actually northern light. And mm -hmm. straight ahead is western. No, sorry. This is southern light is this way. And eastern light is that way. The only so. light I can show you at my place is my... My stick light. Show me your stick light. There ain't no light outside right now. <laughs> it's dark. It's, it's dark still light. Early it's still light. Yeah. You know, I, so we were talking about iPhones too earlier, and, mm. and John sent me some message that was totally incomprehensible, and it was because yeah. it was autocorrect. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> and it's funny. So, when, I had an Android, when I had an Android phone, I never experienced all I often heard people with their iPhones talk about all these crazy autocorrect things. And then until I got an iPhone, I had never experienced that because Android was much better at autocorrect and still is than the iPhone. That's the only thing that disappoints me a bit. With why did you get the iPhone? Because of all the great video. Stuff. It was because of wicked marketing. Yeah. So for me, the iPhone, what finally sold me was the apps for it. So when yeah. I saw the like Filmic Pro and some of the different apps that I could do the video stuff that I wanted to do with it, that's what finally sold me on it. So it was marketing, but it wasn't Apple's marketing. It was the apps people's marketing. It, was, it wasn't Apple. It was app. Apps. Yeah. It was full of apps. Apps full. It was the app. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. I'm trying to get through a few things. The multiple notifications on this live because I shared it to a bunch of places. And I'm trying to make sure that within groups and things we can people can find us so I can highlight their comments. Because cool. it's the one thing about StreamYard. Stream one thing about StreamYard that's hot is you can't see the comments from group people. All right, good. 
We got you all in there. Man, there's so many notifications. There's way too many notifications. Always. Let me get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of that completely. Good. All right. Yeah, these are the technical things. When you're going live, you often find that you get interruptions periodically. In mm -hmm. fact, I had I had our our six foot one. 13 year old just run in here immediately at two o'clock and wanted attention. I said, I'm going live in a few seconds. <laughs> I know. I read that. I'm getting interrupted by my cat who wants to go out the door. Andrew, no, don't no. don't do it. Oh, come on. All right. So so talk amongst yourselves while while John lets his cat out the door. Some people let the cat out of the bag, but John Paduchak lets the cat let out the of the cat door. Out. Let the cat out the door. Cat out the door. Otherwise, you might have a catastrophe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think it's a catastrophe when cats go outside and start killing birds. That's been my thing. But, hey, I don't have that problem. That's good. That's that's, I've, seen a lot of, I've seen a lot of dead birds around outdoor cats. Mm, my, my cats are terrible hunters, I guess. So autocorrecting is very interesting, which brings me yes. to some other things. The autocorrect, I, I still have no idea what you were trying to tell me. So that's that's part of the problem. <laughs> oh, autocorrect. Yeah. It was something in autocorrect. But the other thing is, I think it's very interesting that over time, what you recognize is that you can see that um, words will populate in your texts and in your social media messages based on your usage. Yeah. And I always find it funny when people report to me that the number of curse words that pop up when they're just trying to write some regular I'm sentences. Confused. I know. I know. The thing, the thing that always aggravates me, this is funny, the thing that always aggravates me is when I go to put down like a website and it tries to, and then it goes and changes it all and splits the words. Yeah. That's aggravating. Well, you can turn off autocorrect. Yeah. I know that when I'm doing domain, you know, doing domain, oh, I've got somebody, okay, hang on. Speak about your domain thing. <laughs> I have a, a friend of mine, a marketing friend of mine, we haven't spoken in almost a year, and he is now messaging me. <laughs> nice. Uh, always the, that's uh, the way. That's always what happens. I just you should say, come on, come join us. <laughs> you should. I'm going to see if I can get him to join us. That would be hilarious. Come check me out. through the Jason Flatland days and others. Oh, yeah. The marketing <laughs> happy hour. Good times. Good times. That reminds me of that sounds like one of those uh, skits from Saturday Night Live. Uh, you know, good times. Like sweaty, the sweaty balls and the, oh, yeah. all the other guys. <laughs> I know. Good. What are we going to do now that the political race is like pretty much wound down? Well, I have gonna plenty make? to do. Like, we're launching a bunch of products and projects. Well, so I, I know. But I'm just saying, what are they going to make fun of on Saturday Night Live? Oh, plenty, plenty. You got if if it's Joe, it's his aviators. If um, it's uh, the other fellow, it's gonna be his his excessive makeup and whatever. I else. know there's always plenty. There's no shortage. Plus you've got plus you've got from November fourth all the way to January twentieth for uh, mayhem to ensue. Mayhem, so, that's my favorite. Totally, word. totally oh, mayhem. Yeah. <laughs> mayhem. Oh, may yeah. her, may her, and may him. Exactly. So, yeah, I think it's funny. I was sharing with uh, with with Dr. V that I was going to change my corporate name to Total Mayhem. Total Mayhem. <laughs> my problem was that was already taken. Total Mayhem. I know. So then we went with Total Mayhem. So you're totally, totally Mayhem. Describes my business. <laughs> the RV, the RV business life. I know. So yeah. Cam, Cam, our friend Cam Jennings was referring to you as RV John. So that's like <laughs> me, man. <laughs> it's RV John in the it's marketing in the truck. I know. I know. It's really funny. Hey, so what's new and exciting these days? You were doing stacking offers today with uh, Ed. We were. We were talking all about stacked offers, and um, there's been some really unique ones over the last couple of days that I've seen. Uh, this, this wasn't, I mean, this wasn't like stacked and packed like the old stuff that uh, Liddy used to do. No, no. Wow. But there, there's definitely a lot of creativity going into some of these offer stacks that are coming out now. There's some so, what would you define? Why well, would you define a good offer stack? Oh my goodness! Um, the one I saw last night was really, really interesting to me. Uh, Todd Brown. It was a Todd Brown one. I know Todd Brown very well. Go oh, good. I don't know him. I had lunch well. with him a couple. Of 
Oh, very cool. I mean, he was he used to run around Rich Sheffrin's office way back, like I want to say it was 2010, 2011, because he was working for Rich. Mm. And uh, but he sold a product to me before that time, which was for uh, managing chiropractic marketing. It was very it was very interesting. But uh, he remembers for sure. Oh, yeah. And he was doing a big thing um, way back when I became familiar with Todd Brown. He was doing a bunch of stuff with massage marketing. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. Taking that yeah. chiropractic model. And One of the people stuff. who did anything with massage marketing. Interesting. Uh, yeah, it was very interesting. And then very interesting. he even had some kind of a, uh, as I recall, uh, market messaging kind of system, emailing system. It was quite unique at the time. That it's prob it probably was part of the same package that I probably purchased. probably it was, it was chiropractic something or other, and I bet he just he just switched out the names. Probably and, just and had a whole dashboard. It was really kind of wild. Yeah, yeah. That was the one. I actually found it a little hard to maneuver around there. I think it was the a little hard to maneuver after a while. Yeah, it yeah, was yeah. a little complex. A little complex. And now he has the E five method, which is very interesting. Yep, yep. and then the um, thing that he was. Uh, pushing last night was um, how you can co-opt somebody else's book. Yeah, I yeah. Have seen that was pretty cool. I was looking at it from the standpoint, um, you know, I've helped my friend Ken Stone quite a bit with his workshops and the like, and uh, Ken's been writing his own book, and he's gone through. I don't know how much of it I should be sharing about this, but I can share a little bit. I think. <laughs> Ken's gonna watch this and tell me you stepped over the line. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but he's been he's been looking for a um, publisher, and I, I think um, it looks very possibly like he may be self-publishing at some point. Hey, even Don Jr. self-published his book and it became a bestseller. So you know, yeah, it's very possible. A lot of people do. It's doable. I mean, everybody wants a a uh, big publisher like Penguin or Wiley or something else like that. But you, you don't need a lot away doing that too like yeah and you get you can actually you if you self-publish and you have the right marketing plan you can actually make more money self-publishing than you ever could from the tiny royalties that a publisher yeah. has to give you yeah so i think we may be trying it you should try that and the other thing i've i've, I've known a number of self-published authors who eventually once their book took off having self-published then landed a publishing deal yeah. at your house so that's another way to do it yeah yeah. So very possibly we might be going in that direction. So the, that attracted me to Todd's offer last night. I was looking at it over for a little while. And then um, he had these. Did he stack it? He nice. did. Yeah. So he had he, he had the, uh, the offer. And then he had for the upsells that you could just do a one-click add-on. He had a traffic offer. And then... Um, <laughs> I don't remember what the other one was. Oh, something about doing your copy, your ad copy was the other one. And then um, the next one, the next full offer after that was an offer for E5 camp. To pick that up. But the, um, the, the, the uh, bump up offers were kind of interesting because you could get them for $47 each mm -hmm. for the two bump up offers, or you'd get the two for $49. Two for 49? That's interesting. Yeah, so you had the option to get both of them for 49, or you could take each one separately for 47. Interesting. Interesting, yeah. I've never seen it on quite I think like that. Not quite like that. No, it was, it was rather unique hmm. in that regard. Mm -hmm. But um, anyway, so that the, we were talking about that today uh, with Ad, and um, he had some offers that he had bumped into as well. So we're just kind of talking about that in our group today. Were they bump offers? No, I don't think his were bump offers. Um, his were just a, a kind of a traditional stack. Actually, I finished. I finished watching that live um, maybe about an hour ago or so. Yeah, it was interesting to see how you could take a product and make it into almost an experience, a physical product. Yeah, and all the different things you have, like your money back guarantee, and you know, you the idea that you stacked the value by offering two of the same product for the same price, that type of stuff. Yeah, and I don't know about you, but I really think that um, the people who are gonna do the best in the coming years are the ones that do make their offer more of an experience. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. Uh, because I, you know, 
one of the things that bothers me and has a lot over the years is the fact that um, some offers coming away with the thud factor. And you know what I'm talking about with the thud factor. Yeah, we have our, you have this, so this many things. Giant stack of stuff yeah, like the book exactly. that my laptop is on right now. Right. And I think too many people feel overwhelmed. I know I do. And then I know a lot of friends of mine do just feel totally overwhelmed with a giant stack of stuff. I would much rather have something that helps me take working with the product they're offering a little bit further, um, maybe uh, a quick bit of personal personalized attention from the from the developer of the product. Um, things like that I tend to put more weight into than the thud factor of giving me a whole bunch of stuff that's going to stack my pack my hard drive and I'll never look at probably. Well, I like bite-sized pieces of content. I yeah, think yeah, somebody, yeah, somebody gives me a, a string. I, I, I'm in a coaching program right now, and, and I've got this uh, – I'm not even going to mention the person's name because I do like what they offer. But some of the videos are great because they're like 12 minutes, 15 minutes. But every once in a while, I get these hour-long 90 or 90-minute videos that I just can't take. And oh, really? I'd rather read the transcript at that point. <laughs> Well, we buy something because we want to get a, I think these days more than ever, we buy something because we want to get a transformation from a particular product. Yeah. And so any way that you can help somebody to achieve that transformation um, makes so much more sense than just stacking on to it with stuff. Hey, hold, hold that thought about experience and transformation. All right. I'll be right back. You can talk. All right. To I'll hold that thought. Sure. We'll just talk <laughs> about you while you're gone. No problem. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I'm back now. Oh. So, <laughs> I wouldn't go on that long. But, no. but so I've been a big, big fan of gamification. In fact, I have a couple of gamification shirts from, from big events that happened in San Francisco a few years ago. And one of the things that came about that was creating a stack of game cards. Oh, cool. And in terms of creating experiences, I think looking at or applying the same psychological principles that are used by game designers can often create the experience that you may want for your clients, yeah. uh, for their customers, and uh, inject a little bit of fun into something that might not always lend itself to amusement. And so if there's a little bit of surprise and delight and things like that. So we created these cards a long time ago and the, the organization, the business is now defunct Oh. But the but the cards were really interesting because you would try to let's see I'm gonna get a good example here there would be motivation cards and um, victory cards and other things like that I think my card is in here somewhere no, uh, give me an example so these are like so these were the victory cards. So it would be like your goals. And when you looked at the victory, this would be like one, for example, of territorial control. Right. So, so somebody, for example, who is a salesperson might want to control a certain territory. Or when you're developing a game, one of my favorite games as a kid was Risk. Because you, I wanted to just control the world. In particular, I always like to invade Canada. And so there was always a lot of fun to control the territory by doing that. I'm there a big were, in the brain fan, so I get you there. Kind of, yeah. World domination. <laughs> world domination. Domination. Actually, funny you're going to do tonight, Pinky. That's well, we do every day. That's what my wife said this morning at about five in the morning or so. Another one would be, say, for example, your motivator. What's your motivation when you're doing something? So when you create one of these experiences, your motivation, 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 motivation might be power. All right. And so, so you're, you're, uh, I need to redo these cards. So you want to have position, leadership, authority, uh, control over people, and you want to be an influencer. And right. so you would use these cards and kind of you know pick your favorite cards and figure out which combination you wanted to use to create an experience. I think this would be really good for digital courses. In fact, I think it would be good for the one that we're creating. We might want to inject a little bit of, of gamification into the course. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of hard too because a lot of um, a, lot, a lot of content uh, management areas for. You know, final courses haven't really added that piece in well. Yeah, I mean, there's always a lot of people will make the mistake of doing just their idea of gamification is just points, badges, and a leaderboard. Yeah, we call it the the, the PBL, and PBL does not work well. 
I can tell you that because no. you have to really have a distinction of intrinsic versus extrinsic motivation. You have to really look at um, a sense of putting in some Easter eggs, having surprise and delight and having rewarding people sometimes intermittently for accomplishing their results. True. So it's, if you think of, I'm almost a little bit in terms of metaphors. I mean, Tony Robbins has often said that if you look at uh, the overall metaphor of your life will tell you something about what your expectations are. And one of them was uh, if life is a game or if life is a battle, they're going to be, there's going to be a lot of stri strife and you're going to lose battles and win battles and everything else. If life is a game, it can be fun to play the game, but they're going to be winners and losers. And I don't think people really want to be losers. They all want to be winners. That's everybody, everybody, gets, wants to be a winner. everybody gets a trophy. You know, that doesn't work either. Doesn't but, work. but I will say that in another example was life is a dance, which is like the old, is that a Garth Brooks song? I think it is. Life's a dance. You learn as you go. Sometimes you, leave, sometimes you fall. Yeah, I think it is. Anyway, it was either Toby Keith or Garth Brooks. One of you guys. I'm not sure. I don't anyway, know. But, but anyway, but life's a dance. Yeah. And so so what I remember of that is like sometimes you lead, sometimes you follow. Sometimes you're a leader. Sometimes you're a follower. Sometimes you're talking. Sometimes you're listening. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so there's a give and take involved in that. And it's fun to dance. It's an easy exercise. So I kind of like that metaphor to a certain extent or life is just fun to play. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Once you roll the dice, <laughs> see what comes up. I like, mm -hmm. like, was it John Lennon or gosh, I'm getting all my things mixed up. It's either John Lennon or George Harrison who said, life is what happens to you while you're making other plans. I think it was Lennon. I could be wrong. <laughs> I'm feeling very, yeah, it could be George. It sounds more like George yeah, Harrison. Harrison. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just getting all my quotes wrong today. That's all right. What was the one? Oh, here's the other one that I liked about this yeah, one. Well I just poked myself in the eye with my... You've done that twice with your microphone. No, that's actually... I've not poked myself in the eye with that one. No, but a couple of seconds ago, you smacked yourself in the head with it. I didn't feel <laughs> it. It was bouncing like this. I didn't it's, feel You do need to do something with it. Oh, rest. it's the social aspect. So here, yeah. So when you're doing... When you're creating some sort of an experience, you want to have a social component. Social. Sure. It's hard for me to see this one. When we do the new version of this. I want more contrast. I think that, that dark blue on black is too dark. Yeah. So I couldn't even read social. But that's where we talk about the sense of having a leaderboard. Mm -hmm. Who is accomplishing great things? You know, get your little hurrahs and things like that. Now, leaderboards are interesting. I'm sorry to get on a tangent today because we were talking about autocorrect, but I'm going to autocorrect myself here shortly. <laughs> um, leaderboards are interesting because if you show the huge leaderboard, yeah. People get really discouraged, particularly if they're towards the bottom and they see somebody 100 levels up. So yeah. one of the ways that you really improve a leaderboard is to condense it so that you're only seeing maybe one or two people above you and one or two people below you. And then it feels more achievable that you can get the result. And right. that's that's why if you have a five-figure business right now and you want to have an eight-figure, and you look at all the eight-figure business and seven-figure business people, you may get discouraged thinking how is how long it's going to take you to climb up that ladder. For sure. So yeah. So I, I, the pin well, that's one of the mistakes with the pinball machines. Remember those from a long time ago where they show the high score? It was like you know two hundred and fifty thousand. Do you do that? I know. Yeah, I feel like it's impossible. So, so if you see somebody succeeding in business, I think this is interesting. You can either become discouraged because you're not there yet, yeah, or we can become inspired to attain to something, and that's a real mindset shift for a lot of people. That's like this word game that Andrew and I like to play, and we were looking at it one night, and I can't remember what the what the high score was or whatever, but I'm like. He, some people somewhere must be playing this every day in and out without stopping <laughs> to achieve this, this this score that they have. I'm just like, that's crazy. Well, it feeds it feeds into sort of the addictive behavior. Is another book, another book that I've been ah, I got to reach the long arm of the law. Another book that I was reading recently, paging through it because I've listened to the audio book before. Is one I recommend is Hooked. 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 
really interesting how you can how you can create experience products and other things that will actually get wasn't it? Hook. What? Wasn't it a movie? Hook. Hook. This is different. You're thinking of <laughs> that was with Robin Williams as Peter Pan. So and Dustin Hoffman as Captain Hook. Yeah. Trivia, man. Trivia. Yeah. Anyway. Dustin, yeah. Yeah, no, hooked is hooked is a little bit different. I mean, that's more kind of going for dopamine and oxytocin and all those good feeling chemicals. But community, I think that when you have a product or a digital product or a digital experience product, which can create a sense of community and camaraderie, I think we're all looking for that sort of thing. Of course. You know, like what would be a good example of where you, I guess like a Facebook group. Yeah. yeah. No, or something else. How else would you create a little more profound than a Facebook group? Because okay. to me, um, some Facebook groups have a really good community. Yeah, I mean that's the idea behind it is to to do that, um, especially the ones that are around, you know, passion projects and that kind of thing. And the paid ones, the paid yeah. ones. Yeah, and the paid ones, and it's kind of well. Let's put it this way: most paid paid ones should have that. Right. Even a lot of them are missing that, and it's and it's interesting to analyze why some of them have that and some of them don't. And I was thinking about that recently. Like, what are the groups that I tend to interact with the most? And um, I haven't really got a clear answer on that. Like, to me, what? Kind of makes certain things gel. I know the ones that I tend to respond to more are the ones that, um, like the RV group, I'm really involved in. The one that I belong to, you know, where we're exchanging repair ideas and different places to pick things up, and I'm always interested in that because I just happen to be in that moment right now. It's the end of the season. I'm doing a lot of repairs and changing things around and getting ready to store my RV for the winter. Uh, right. Just here. Oh, okay. You so awesome. have a giant garage or warehouse. That you no, no. I like to have a big garage for it, but I don't. But just well, that's it. But the but the RV thing—that's a passion of yours. That's something. It's of mine, and I'm really, really passion, really. Up in. and it's it's um, funny how many other people are so passionate about it too. And I see the same thing with dogs. With not so much with cats, but dogs. There's a lot chickens. Huge passionate group. About you should chicken. have an RV chicken group. Just niche it down. Niche it down. <laughs> an RV chicken group. RV chicken group. Yeah. RVs. We has the chickens. Yeah. No, no maybe that wouldn't work. <laughs> but, but I could see. I you know actually you could create something that would be RV owners, RV enthusiasts who are also dog owners. That yeah. would be very interesting. You know what group has an interesting passion about it. And yeah. I've been really looking at and analyzing that. Yeah. The group, the group um, uh, Life of an Ant in the Ant Colony group. You really are obsessed with that one since the COVID hit. I <laughs> I saw it since I first saw it. But people are so funny about that group. It's really, it's it's like a, it's kind of like Seinfeld. You know, it's a group about nothing, really. I mean, it's. Yeah. <laughs> That's very interesting. It, it's fascinating. I, I do like my friend, well, you're a member of this group too, Lindsay Anderson's group, the Launch Circle. That's yeah. that's driven, it's personality driven, I think, to a great extent. There's a lot of really good content, but really it's the personality and the number of live broadcasts and the interaction, the Q&A and comments and this and that and everything else. I think that create, if you, but you have to work at creating that sense of fun within a group. Some of the groups are very personality driven. Yeah, they're very personality driven. Yeah, I mean, personality -driven. So, but then, but then you ask yourself, you know, is this, is your product because you call it an experience product or it's an experience that people are after. If, if it's totally dependent on your personality, is it scalable? And it might be if you're like a Tony Robbins and you've got 30,000 people on a Zoom call. And a very strong personality. And a very strong personality. Very strong. Personality driven. Say yeah. personality driven. So I think, I, and who was it? Was Scott Olford or a few others I've spoken to? They talk about you know people just really really want access to you and they want you want to know that you care about them and that right. you acknowledge them. And I think that's the beauty of doing live broadcasting, particularly within a group where you get to know people 
uh, intimately. Particularly. Particularly intimately. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of leaves. There is a lot of that. I mean, uh, the other groups that I'm in that I am very involved with, I mean, I know a lot of people in them. Or I've gotten to know a lot of people in them from comments and questions about things. Here's the quote. Here's the quote that I have. I stick it over here on this thing. It's like people, people will buy your presence, your ability to actually care, mm -hmm. and that you can fix their problems. There you go. Yeah. So I, 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 I was thinking about it. I just didn't get I didn't get the quote right. I'm not getting any quotes right. I might get the quote right, but I don't know who to agree <laughs> That's all right. Not today. Who said it? Me. I said it. You said I said it. I think you know that's that's the beauty of it. I, uh, one of my friends, Sam Crowley, who's uh, his brand was Every Day is Saturday. Long story behind that one, yeah. but it's one of my favorite podcasts, and um, is the Every Day is Saturday one. And he mentions um, something to the effect of, um, well, first the first thing is that nobody really cares about you as much as as you think they do. In the fact, they barely even notice you. So when you're starting your podcasts and doing your broadcasts and doing your marketing, you don't have to be self-conscious because nobody's listening to you. <laughs> that's a good point. I think there's a lot of truth to that. Yeah. And so when we have when we train people to get over themselves in terms of yeah, you just just yeah. recognize that you know you might as well start now and practice because not many people are really watching you. Mm -hmm. And over time, people will watch you, and and you'll have your hits and your misses, and some broadcasts will be better than other broadcasts. And what you have to know is, it's you're making an investment of your time in this in this type of thing. Are. Yeah, it's a big investment of time. I mean, it's a, it's some investment in money. I mean, I got the microphone, I got the stream yard, that sort of thing. Yeah, it doesn't have to be. It, it does become an investment of money after a while. Yeah, I mean, you could, do, you could do everything on your phone if you wanted to. You really could. People. Um, up in the oh I can't do that it costs me too much money to get started yeah then and I think that's just that's just one more excuse yep the, many, many of the so-called reasons that we can't do something are just an excuse because the reality is we just don't want to do it it's not that we can't do it we just don't want to right yep it's it's like oh I can't go live no you don't want to go live because if you did you'd be doing it all then yeah, if you did, you'd be doing it, right? <laughs> just go do it. I think I think a lot of that just has to do with the fear that we place in ourselves. I mean, we're live right now to many times we're live to hundreds, sometimes thousands of people when you consider the replays. We did a, an Instagram live yesterday with my wife, and uh, we did one yesterday. Normally, she goes at uh, 1 o'clock Pacific on Tuesdays to do a recipe in front of folks. But yesterday, we launched a store. For Mama Maggie's Kitchen, a little Shopify store. And cool. started, she's selling aprons now that we get from Mexico and masks, beautiful masks, all kinds of things. Well, that store just came together in a matter of like 48 hours. It was really fast. And, and we just launched it with an Instagram Live. And I wound up modeling the aprons. I bet you were lovely. Unbeat, unbeat to me. She pulls me in, in the live. I'm telling you, recovery is everything. You've got to check out. If you ever get a chance, check out Mama Maggie's Kitchen on Instagram. It's the IGTV thing that came out this yesterday, Thursday. And apparently, it was hysterical. I have still not seen it. But there are thousands of people who loved it and liked it and watched it. And apparently, there are hundreds and hundreds of comments that are coming in. So the main one I thought that was nice to hear was that I was a good sport. But yeah. I had no intention of being on this live broadcast yesterday. Fortunately, I had enough experience that I didn't mind looking silly with an apron on me. So did you sell a pile of aprons or what? We sold a lot of aprons. Oh. We sold a lot of aprons. This The store has been going wild. In fact, we have to go to our supplier and get more because we, we it was an experiment because people kept asking her, you know, where can I get that apron? How can I get that apron? And so after about three weeks of hearing this, uh, we decided to to uh, bring them in from Mexico. That's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. And we know. Did we you know drive down and get them yourself? Yep. We drive down, get them ourselves. <laughs> we know the merchant. We went, we shopped a lot of these mercados all over the place to try mm -hmm. and the right selection, the right price, who's willing to give us a deal and everything else. 
And uh, and this fellow, he, you know, the next time we go down there, we're probably going to get a, a a deeper discount because we're going to be buying a lot more. More. So, and they're, they're, all, they're all made in Mexico. Mexico. They're all made in Mexico, and we'd rather support people who are in Mexico. You know, people say, "Well, you know, I'm living paycheck to paycheck." Some people in Mexico are living day to day. You know, am I going to eat no. today? So, yeah. yeah. And so, just when just when you think you've had it bad. <laughs> yes, I know. Go across the border, senor. We get it so easy. We really do. Our worst days could be some could be better than most people's best. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, just think think of all the people who used to come up uh, and work on your family farm. Oh, I know. Yeah. I know. I remember that well. The most the most interesting thing is watching forty five black SUVs cruise across your farm property. <laughs> was the president in town? <laughs> yeah, the president was not in town. Wasn't the motorcade? <laughs> oh my gosh. The stories I could tell. Oh boy. Well, we'll save those for another broadcast. <laughs> uh, the broadcast has taken an interesting story. We started out with auto autocorrect while your autocorrect may be killing your business. You I do have to check. Now we're talking about border patrol and immigration. Immigration. We have <laughs> I think but what's interesting too, going back to the whole autocorrect thing is yeah. when, you more, when you do more and more stuff on your phone, sometimes it's good to disable autocorrect. I've noticed that. And particularly if I'm creating memes, because I, I like to, I've really begun to enjoy uh, using Canva on my iPhone. I, I actually think it's easier on the iPhone to make changes in Canva than it is to use the desktop version. It's surprising how many how many different apps um, are better to use on your phone. It's Do you know what's even better? You don't, yeah. yeah. You don't have this, but I use iMovie a lot. And because you do you have you don't have a MacBook. You've got a PC. I don't have a PC. PC, yeah. But but the MacBook version, the desktop version of iMovie, I find is not as easy to use as as the uh, app I just and I was astounded because at first I was completely confused because it was significantly different in terms of the interface. But I had to do a couple of application videos for a contest, and I had a, I guess it was three minutes and fifty fifty seven seconds, and I had to cut out scenes and shift. It was easier to move things around with my finger yeah. instead of trying to use a trackpad or a mouse. Yeah. So my my biggest thing with um, with the autocorrect comes because I use speech to text a lot. I use speech to text. Oh, a lot that's good. I have trouble making my fingers touch the right places because I have tremors. And so um, over the years, I really looked at all the transcription software and all the different things that and how they work much more intricately probably than most people because of that. Because um, you know over the years they've definitely gotten markedly worse. Most people wouldn't know it because you don't notice on video. That's why I work remotely for years <laughs> and virtually with everyone because they never know. 300 people staring at you. Well, while well, that's the thing. I go to a coffee shop. I got 80 people like going, hanging around me. You okay? Everything all right? <laughs> hey, buddy, are you all right? You okay? um, so for me, it's been fascinating like watching the, the evolution of it, seeing how things have changed. And I've noticed that I can do a lot more with my um, with my Android pad than my phone. I don't have, I have an Android phone anymore, but you know, my Android pad than my phone. The autocorrect is better. Um, and then some of the other apps, you know, like Otter.ai is really good at transcription. Um, Amazon transcription is pretty good. Teamy has improved over the years. There's just so many great transcription programs. And I remember how much we used to pay to get stuff transcribed and now it's relatively inexpensive. In some cases, nearly free. Yeah, there are some places where, so there's one that begins with an R, I can't remember what that is. Rev. Rev, that's it. Rev, but everybody used to use Rev. And Rev is, um, Rev is unique in itself because it's like uh, college students doing the transcription. Mm. So that's where college students are going to work to make money online. Beer money. Yeah, beer money for doing transcription. <laughs> or book, book, money. Book, book money. Yeah, it's book money. For your if you had a potty school. But really, it's beer money. Yeah, the same. <laughs> yeah. I'm booking my next visit to the brewery. <laughs> I know. I know. 
So there's, so when it comes right down to it, it's interesting. I don't use much, of, I've never used much of anything in transcription. I know people who do that all the time. We found that captions on live videos are very interesting because Maggie, because she's speaking to a bilingual audience, she will oftentimes do the broadcast, the live broadcasts for Mama May's Kitchen are done in Spanglish because she'll use a bunch of Spanish words mixed in with the English and captioning software on Facebook and others just can't handle it. No. Can't do it. Probably will. A lot of editing. Yeah, it will be before we know it. But right now, I'm sure it's rough. The other thing that's been fun is, um, especially with me, you know, RVing around and cruising around all over the place and working on the road is working more mobile. Yeah. It's been uh, fun to watch over the last couple of years because, you know, pretty much all the things that we use, um, Active Campaign, AWeber, um, everybody's got their own apps. It's right. like you to work from your phone. Not so great, though, if you don't have a good connection wherever you are, but that's improving, too. Yeah, I think there's a, I specialized for a long time in bopping around the country at some, doing seminars, taking seminars as well as presenting seminars. Yeah. And I used to love to go to every Starbucks I could get to. And sometimes I used to drive back and forth from DC to Buffalo regularly. Mm -hmm. And if I needed something, I would just park outside the McDonald's and suck up some Wi Fi. Sure. And that they had a great signal all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, it's funny. You know, one of the um, one of the cool RV tools, it, which uh, which is really unique, and I've never seen anything like it anyplace else except you know people who work mobily. But they have this thing called Wi-Fi Ranger, and it takes all of your internet signals, including public internet signals from different places, and spools them into a one consistent signal that you can drive. It's the, it's the most wild thing I've ever seen. Yeah, it's cool, wicked cool. That's, <laughs> that's really cool. So, I mean, that's the kind of stuff we got to look forward to. The technology is really amazing in some areas, and that's one that's really getting pretty wild. But the fact that you can combine all those signals and make, like, one. That's crazy. Bringing Wi-Fi in from McDonald's and Burger King and Dunkin' Donuts and then mixing it with your own, that's pretty cool. You deserve a break today and America runs on don't There you go. <laughs> you could do you could do tagline mashup. So yeah. So there's some pretty neat technology in different places. Very interesting. So for a mobile mm -hmm. lifestyle. But autocorrect, you still don't like autocorrect on the iPhone. Nope. Can't you just disable it? Yeah, I think I'm sure you can. I autocorrect. Yeah. And I you know, but I think you can disable autocorrect and you will still get pretty good voice to text. I could be wrong. Oh, I may have to try that. I yeah, may have to try that. But also I think it's always good to be a little cautious if you're doing most of your business from your phone and you do have problems with autocorrect when you're making memes and sending things out. I've made mistakes before. <laughs> or you're sending a text message to somebody or Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp yeah. and they totally misunderstand what you meant. So, oh my gosh, I know. I'm, I'm going back to your message and trying to figure out what the hell you were trying to tell me. So. I know. We can, we can have some pretty good laughs over some of the things we said to each other. Just crazy. So, uh, so what's, anything new coming up on the horizon? Anything new coming up on the horizon? Um, we're going to a new coaching program. Good. Which is cool. Uh, is all baseball or hockey? Of my own. Oh. No, of course. More of a laser coaching style than I than I've done before in the past. So that, yeah. Are these, cats, are these cats with lasers? Yeah. Oh no, that would be fun. <laughs> Dolphins with lasers. Dolphins. Dolphins with lasers. So what are the laser coachings? I'm curious. I I have really been a couple of my friends have switched to this over the over the last couple of years, and it's yeah. um instead of you know, coaching as we know it or consulting as we know it, having X number of sessions and, right. um, you know, schedule them out. Uh, this is more along the line of you can schedule your introductory session is fairly long, like 30 minutes. And then 15-minute um, really concentrated sessions where you walk away with homework and you can make another appointment when you've finished that homework. So it actually entices you to stay on a schedule, um, commit to what you're doing, 
and uh, actually do what you say you're going to do. And then you can schedule your next session, which I like all of those things about it because it actually works some accountability factor into it. Do people drop off or something like that? Like, um, you don't do their homework? Well, of course. I mean, that's the biggest challenge, right, is people not doing their homework, and they, they're just kind of like, oh, well, I can't go back. I didn't do my homework. So um, I think so. But, I mean, people people will purchase coaching or consulting and, like, never um, do anything with it at all. Never crack it open. I've been guilty yeah. of that many times. I got the adrenaline rush of making the purchase, and then I've got these big plans. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I, In fact, what was really funny, I just recently unearthed a series of um, SaaS a, a program software as a service yeah. that I never used, but they've been continuously upgraded since I purchased many years ago. Okay. I've got lifetime access to them. I'm thinking, God, now I finally know what to do with them. Yeah, but, I got to do things like that, too. Yeah, but these were gathering dust on my hard drive. Or hard drives, I should say, plural. Mm -hmm. I've had some things with lifetime access that just kind of went sour. I've had those too, where <laughs> I tried to type in the URL and it's gone, or it's been purchased by somebody in China, and I'm getting uh, my antivirus software that malware has been detected. Yes, yeah, there's that. And I, as I recall, I had not purchased malware, so right. And this was like, um, you know, because I, I over the years had gotten quite a few things from AppSumo and, and those kinds of things. I find I buy very little from them now because, I mean, I like the lifetime deals and it's something really great. But also I'm finding that there's a lot more turnover, yeah. things going sour that I didn't have before. Yeah, I, f I found the same thing. I think I've got like two out of a dozen things that still work. <laughs> so. It's sad, actually, when you think about Those are it. things that evolve. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Uh, that might be something Noah wants to look at, how things may have evolved. And maybe his model isn't as, is, I wonder if his model is as successful as it once was. I don't know. I think there was more enthusiasm in the past. Hmm, I agree. I think so, because we used to see a lot more stuff shared. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Okay. I, I purchased a, an alternative to Zoom for meetings, which actually was very nice, and it still works, mm -hmm. but they really haven't upgraded it much. And then I purchased a couple other things. Um, I think sometimes it's very interesting to see the pricing that people quote as their eventual pricing or valued at such and such a thing. Yeah. And they never actually launch at that price, nor do they. And, and I think I've been seduced before by saying, oh, my God, I can get this uh, $2,497 platform lifetime access for only 20 bucks. I put that plunk down the 20 bucks. So I got to revisit one of my favorites that um, I had really high hopes for. And then um, the people who developed it really didn't keep to what they told us they were, that they were going to do. But I still think there's a big use for it in um, what I'm doing in workshops and the like, and that's hopping. That's oh, yes. So keeping a big eye on, because I, I do think it revolutionizes, revolutionizes a lot of the virtual meetings and things that we do. And I, you know, I love that idea of it, but. I love the concept of a virtual meeting. What I love more, even more than that, is a live event where you can actually be face to face with people. Yeah, um, we've we it's are conditioning the of the two. Yeah, we are conditioning ourselves though to find virtual more acceptable in terms of interaction. Like you and I have never met face to face, no. but we feel that we know a lot about each other based upon the fact that we've been communicating a lot. We do since March. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure if we met face to face, it'd be like, yeah, it would just be natural. Very, yeah. it's like it's like uh, Maggie and I have our friend Nazim, who's originally from uh, New York City. Yeah, he, he yeah he married a, a woman Betty, and they live in Milan. And so he commutes back and forth sometimes from Milan to Genoa. He works up uh, um, working on Richard Branson's cruise ships for Virgin Virgin. Oh, nice. Designing, helping to design those things, and when we met, we met face to face for the first time after I want to say it was five years or six years, maybe even seven years, and it was just as if we'd known each other all our lives. I mean, he was taller than I expected him to be, but that's about it. Yeah. You know, other than that, 
other than height, I, it was just, we just picked up and we had, a, had had so many conversations for so many years and we did yeah. some little hangouts and yeah. It was as if you've known each other forever, but best friends, and you can develop very strong bonds with people. Really can. It's yeah. pretty Virtual, and if you can do, if you can stomach, or at least if you can train yourself to like to go live, mm -hmm. you'll find that you can make those connections even more instantaneously. Just if you get over the fear of having your face being shown. Super easy. The landscapers are here. Can you hear that? I can hear that. I can hear. Oh. It's funny because so many times you'll say, "Do you hear all those jets going?" Do you hear, the, do you hear, I don't the, hear anything? But today I hear the landscape. Do you hear that squadron of Black Hawk helicopters? <laughs> no. I no. today today the cargo planes took off. I think yeah. these C like seventeens or something like that. And I was like, "Oh my god!" And they came almost right over the house. All the windows were closed for a change. Yeah. It, it, when it's 60 degrees, it's freaking freezing here. And so I had the windows closed, but you know, it was just shy of the windows rattling. And it was just like unbelievable. This guy, yeah, this one is the next door neighbor. So I think maybe it's time since the landscaping has started. We might want to close out our session today of the marketing happy hour. Oh, that's all right. I got another funny one for you. Did you watch our session the other day on um, local marketing strategies where uh, Ed? Um, I don't know if it was his daughter or wife went and like flushed while he was on the air. Did what? Went and like flushed the toilet while he was on the air. <laughs> and he didn't mute, but he, he's thinking that like everybody heard it. And so we get done and I said, Ed, I got to tell you, nobody heard anybody flush, but we all heard you complaining to your wife. Or daughter. <laughs> <laughs> so it was pretty funny. I, I it's, it's kind of a classic rookie mistake. I think but, a lot of it's with frequencies because the high pitch frequency of the blower. Yes. Yeah, I can hear that. Yeah, you can hear that. That's because I got my windows open over in the bedroom. My office is just off the bedroom. I got two windows open for. I love the cross breeze. I do not lo love the lawnmower and the blower, which sometimes mm -hmm. apparently happens on Fridays now. Mm -hmm. No, it, Friday's a good day to wrap things up for the week, you know? Head and fall back. So with that, and with the increasing noise of my next door neighbor, <laughs> maybe it's time to close out our day. <laughs> Marketing happy hour. We are. What beverage did you have today? Oh, I, this is a this is an unusual one. This is one that I. Um, it's a mix that uh, I drink for my. Is it vodka and whiskey? It's not. It's not alcoholic at all, which is oh. shocking. But it's a it's a mix I drink for my. Um, Digestive stuff. Ah, so probiotics and things, or no? It's a probiotic, kind of a probiotic concoction. Yeah, it's got some greens in it, and it's it has some rather unique elements to it. He he stopped. He slowed down now. It's at a lower speed. You may not be able to hear it as well. I can't hear it now. Now you can't hear it. Yeah, because it's lower. Oh, now he's going to. It gets higher and higher pitched. <laughs> So must be it's got so must be when we hear the jet engines they're not high pitched they're much lower yeah they're lower and they're rumbling and they're rumbling so the lower rumbling stuff you're not getting picked up but the high yeah because I can hear the, so the frequency, <laughs> if there's a way for me to figure this thing out I should pick up more lower frequencies and oh no I don't want to pick up the lower frequencies because then you're going to hear every you're going to hear the black hawk helicopter I'm sure if you had a soundboard connected to your high you could probably yeah that maybe that maybe that's my next maybe that's going to be my request probably for work a lot of that out um I know on my yeti they've got different settings on it yeah um one's one's more of a for podcasts you know it's just more unidirectional and then there's another one that's a setting that's more for like a boardroom kind of thing, more universal. And um, that seems to eliminate quite a lot of stuff. He temporarily stopped. Yeah, I can tell. Can't hear him. I can tell too. Hey, yeah. so any anything you want to call people out to with your new laser coaching or? Um, not yet, but just it's yeah. coming. So if you're if you're interested in uh, in having some help with your video and marketing surrounding it. It might be a good opportunity. And if you need a name for it, I might help you. So, All right. If you're nice to me. <laughs> I just want to call it John's laser coaching. 
What's that? I was just going to call it John's laser coaching. Or John's laser something. coaching. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to call it. It's not laser coaching from the John. I used to have a thing where I used to call it focus consulting. Yeah. But then I find that what I'm doing is really not so much consulting as it is advising. So, so what's the difference between it sounds weird. Well, what's the difference between an advisor, a, uh, a consultant, and a coach? I think I think there's a little bit of difference, like in the connotation of the name. Like when I hear somebody talking between coach, advisor, and consultant, and then mentor, I have a different mental image of of them. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Terminology yeah. branding is just so incredibly interesting to me. You know, yeah. I'm like, I'm too too. I've never liked the I've never really liked the word coach. What about but mentor? Consultant. I like mentor. Guide. I like mentor. Like he's started coming out the other window. All right, so he's moved. <laughs> he's moved around the house. It was fun while it lasted. <laughs> oh, well. All right, so with that. I'd like to thank Ryan from next door for doing his uh, landscaping right now. Doing his landscaping Third show. <laughs> show. All right. Uh, so this has been our episode of the Marketing Happy Hour. If you have any questions or comments, or you want some advice, yeah, you can reach us here on the Marketing Happy Hour Facebook page, or you can even send us a Facebook message if you have a problem that you want solved, or. Even more importantly, if you'd like to drop in your comments or your questions here underneath this video and tag us, we'll be sure to respond to you because we are nothing if not responsive. Exactly. And if they're lengthy, we'll just add them to next Friday's conversation. Yeah. If I end this, if you, if you, we're always looking for stuff to talk about. Yeah. If you have any particular topic that's burning in you, like Brand. how to do live broadcasts when your neighbors are. You know, using blowers, just let us know. You should try doing video game. when your neighbors are doing using blowers. Game design. Game design is another good one, too. <laughs> oh, the lawnmower started. Is that less audible? Yeah, that's less audible. Interesting. So the lawnmower, you can't hear. The blower, you can. I'll have to remember that for future broadcasts. Yeah. So remember, all marketing is just a series of experiments, and live broadcasting requires that you accept that there will be imperfections. You know what we should do? We should broadcast sometime early morning and see if we can hear them crushing rocks down at the quarry. We could try that. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, it's funny. I was so surprised when I first moved here to, uh, to the area that I live in. It's a funny story. To the area that I live in, I don't remember ever hearing a quarry. And the quarry is like, um, except for when they would do blasting. You know, like my house shakes when they, when they actually start blasting. But uh, now it's like every morning my wife and I wake up and all we can hear is ka-chunk, 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 crushing of rocks. Oh, they're and crushing rocks. Every oh. morning at the quarry. Yeah, it's pretty wild. I wonder if that would show up on you. Values in your area? Like, you know, if you're closer to the quarry, your house is less expensive. Uh, no. Well. I'm wondering. There might, there might be some truth to that. I'm wondering. Is this is this, this, this house is Houses closer to railroad tracks usually do not sell as high a no, price. No, no. Businesses doesn't even bother about houses. Yeah, businesses don't care. But no. the uh, I do know also that there's some who have had conferences. Was it uh, Brenda Burchard, I think, had a conference many years ago where he, he had his location right near the railroad, near the ocean. Mm -hmm. Because when you're in the ocean here in Southern California, you're also near the railroad tracks. <laughs> Oh wow! That's and the trains cool. kept coming through the entire time. <laughs> he never had anticipated. Gosh. There's a there's another guy I know that's a a big marketer and does a lot of videos, and he lives next to a train track, and all you can hear in his videos is the train going by. <laughs> it's, it's, it's hilarious. After a while, you just kind of get used to it, and and so for me, it's fighter planes, squadrons of helicopters. And cargo jets. Yeah, for, like, for me, it's rock crusher, rock crushing, uh, landscapers. Landscapers are like ridiculous, or some kind of construction stuff around me. Hey, so if we if we can accomplish our live broadcasts yeah. with cargo planes, squadrons of helicopters, lawnmowers, as well as blasting and crushing of rocks, 
you can also go live. Exactly. It's all about do you choose to let it affect you and, and control your life or you yeah. just do it anyway? And remember, recovery is everything. It is everything. All right. All right. And we'll be back with everything concerning okay. marketing next week on the Marketing Happy Hour, which will be at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, and noon Hawaiian time, because now we know that we're all on standard time, including those of you in Oahu. There you go. So, wahoo to those of you Ooh. in Oahu. All right. See you next week. Bye. Bye for now.